So I've always had this idea of building a unicycle basically from scratch. So I've already made the, the first side of this flange here in the hub. This just happens to be, I can't machine this. This is just way too hard. And plus I don't have a mill. So I just uh, used an old bottom bracket that I had laying around that was no good anymore. And I don't plan on using it ever until now. So what I did, I cut it off with a grind, grinding uh, cutoff wheel because this stuff's pretty hard. It's probably been hardened. And then I faced it on the lathe using a carbide bit, which is hopefully harder than this metal. And then on the inside, I put threads to match this random axle that I had floating around. And then that will thread on just to keep it in, in, in the right spot. And then also I need to make sure that this splines orient with the right side, with, in the right orientation with the other side. So I'm gonna use some uh, one, two, three blocks to do that and lay it flat on the table. And then I will weld it in place, just like I did this one, which is not the greatest weld on the planet, but it's hard in the circle. All right, and then this currently is just 5 eighths in the center, because I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna need to drill all of these holes. So I'm just gonna put a 5 eighths round stock on the drill press in a vise and then just spin it. So all the holes end up being the exact same distance from the center. And then I'm going to put this on and I'm gonna weld this flange in place. And then we gotta pay attention to the orientation of these holes now, because I'm doing the second side in relation to these holes here. So the holes on this flange need to be exactly between the holes here. It can be off just, I mean, maybe a degree or two, but we want it to be exactly halfway between these two holes here or any other other two holes where you're, wherever you start. But so it'll be just offset by 10 degrees. All right, I have this disc here that I got from a metal supplier who often uh, cuts things out. They're very expensive laser cutter, which I don't have, and I buy it by the pound. So this is gonna be a 36 hole hub. So 18 per side and 360 divided by 18 is 20. So each one of these holes is 20 degrees apart. And using the magic of trigonometry, using this diameter, which is two inches, 80 degrees from the first hole is gonna be the radius from the center to here. So I can use a caliper where I get the first hole and then, just, or you can use a compass set to the radius and then you can just scratch, you start the jaw in one spot and then just scratch it. And that will be exactly the radius. So you don't have to figure out using fancy math um, where to put this hole. And then when you use this hole, you can scratch out the next one that's 80 degrees from it, which is four holes out. And then you can keep going and you're gonna have six holes, I believe, or I don't know. And then when you start out the first hole, the next one is going to be two thirds of the radius or one third of the radius. And the next one is going to be two thirds of the radius. And then obviously this is going to be three thirds of the radius here. So you can use that to lay out your holes if you were going to use a 36 hole hub. All right, so I'm just going to punch out a bunch of holes here. And then uh, spokes generally are around two millimeters for, you know, standard spokes. So I got a 332nd drill bit, which is 2.4 millimeters. And hopefully that will be a big enough hole for me to, to th get a J-bend spoke through. And I'm just gonna keep going around and then I'll meet you at the drill press where I drill out all of these holes here. Here I am at the drill press and I just have it set up and I have a 5 8 uh, round stock between uh, the jaws of the vise and this is set to 5 8 in the center so I could spin it around and as I drill these out they're all going to be roughly uh, equidistant from the center and I just have a piece of aluminum pipe underneath so I could drill through without hitting the vise. I'm going to start out with the center drill and just mark these holes a little better than I did with the punch and then I'm going to switch to the 330 seconds drill bit. All right, so I have my trusty oil can that I made and I'm going to brush a lot of oil on just on a certain spot. 
eventually starts to get chips built up and I gotta brush them away. But so this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna drill, 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 drill. So I got all the holes drilled out. Now I'm gonna drill all these little, uh, you know, aesthetic holes like I have here and this hub. And I did 764 ths and I don't remember what size that is, but I have the drill bits. So I don't really I have it set out, so I don't have to think about it. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating, I figured out the distance by using these holes to measure the center in between each one of these other ones. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. So they're just for aesthetics, maybe a little weight savings. So I'm gonna keep doing that and then I'm gonna drill these out. And test the fit. Good. All right, I have this flange made up here, which is gonna slide on that very nicely. And then also I made this little aluminum sleeve. I have a little recess on the back so that I can fit over this weld here. And because it's gonna be in the way, I can't weld the next flange exactly the same. So I'm gonna super glue this in place and then weld this flange on in the right spot. All right, so I stuck a 332 tungsten through, and that gave me the right orientation of this flange to this flange, right in between. So now you know what I'm talking about. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this in place, and I'm just gonna do a fusion weld, and what that means is just means without filler. And uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I want this bead to be as low, the weld bead to be as low as possible, because I gotta put stuff over it. And once you weld it, it's almost impossible to machine, at least accurately. It just does something to the metal and makes it super hard. Even carbide doesn't really touch it very well. So I'm going to fusion weld this and then I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I have it all fusion welded here and now I gotta make some more parts. Okay, so I have a little bit of a pipe here. And what I'm gonna do is replicate this piece right here, this little bushing. It's going to be about uh, 380 thousandths long and I need to create a little recess for this this uh, Isis thing to fit on too. And this will be welded to this and then this will be welded to the flange. Alright so I want to make a little recess that's 60 thousandths deep or about uh, 1 16th of an inch. So my trick is to turn in this dial all the way so it can't possibly go any further. And then I'm going to back it out. Uh, 63 thousandths right there. No, sorry, this says 40 thousandths. All right, 63 thousandths. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to here and then butt it up against that. Sorry, it's a little shaky. And then I'm going to lock on the carriage here. I have to weld this piece to this piece from the inside and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little 45 degree chamfer on this little step here so that I can actually see what I'm welding. I flipped it around in the lathe and then I parted it off as close as I can because this piece is so short and it was very tricky. So now I have to get it to the correct width, which is eight millimeters plus a 16th uh, by a series of facing cuts. All right, I have to get this piece welded to this piece, which is a little bit difficult because it's inside. So I couldn't go too long with this little bushing here. Otherwise, it'd be really difficult to weld. And I'm just going to do a fusion weld on the inside, and then it's going to screw up the threads at the beginning of this, so i got to put it back in the lathe and turn those off so I can screw it on. And this doesn't have to be exactly perfect. I can face everything in the lathe, and then the this part, the ISIS part, is threaded, and it's going to go on square. 
Now it is welded to that ISIS spline, and now I'm going to do a little bit of machining to allow me to thread it onto the shaft. Now I have to line the splines. So I got some 321 blocks here. And eh, come on, focus. So the splines, these top two splines on the bottom here, are sitting flat on these blocks. And then on the other side, I need to do exactly the same. All right, I have the splines lined up. This is threaded on just about as much as it possibly can. And remember, the axle goes through and threads to this thing. So now I just need to attach this to that. So I'm gonna weld. And here I'm gonna use filler rod because I want it to be strong. And then also it's gonna be covered by a uh, bearing holder. So I'm never really gonna see it anyways. All right, so I tried the 330 seconds with a, a standard spoke and it's a little tight. Um, when I'm lacing a wheel up, I'd like to be able to have a little bit of wiggle room trying to get spokes around. So this is a number 38 drill bit. It's a little bit bigger than a 330 seconds. And I'm just gonna go through and clean all the out. So I went around with this, uh, this center drill, which is smaller than the inner diameter, but the shank is a little bit bigger to add a little bit of a, a chamfer. I did it with the drill, but these inner ones, I can't get the drill bit or the drill in, so I'm just gonna have to do it by hand, remove any little burrs. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna give it a little bit of an oxide layer by heating it up to, you know, a couple hundred degrees, few hundred degrees, 500, 600, I don't know what it is, but once you heat it up, it reacts with the oxygen to produce a nice color. I really don't want to have to paint this because as soon as I try to put spokes through it, it's just going to chip the paint off. So I'm just going to put this on. This color, it's kind of, you can kind of make all kinds of colors depending on how hot you get it. I'm just going to go for a nice purpley gold color. And after that, I'm 
probably just going to uh, put a clear coat on it of some sort or maybe just keep it oiled so it doesn't rust but the center is going to be aluminum color because aluminum doesn't have the same properties as steel when you heat it up it doesn't turn a nice color so I'm just gonna let this cool off for a while here and uh, see what color it turns out 